Okay. Now here we are back with beginning beekeeping in Texas. Um, I checked this hive and uh, I set, also set my camera to wide view instead of linear. So hopefully this should, I noticed when I was watching my own videos, half the action was either up here out of view or down here out of view. So this should help. So this hive is um, at the cow pasture and um, the formerly very aggressive hive. Um, requeened them. Got a little hole dug here. Hopefully not snakes. It just got done raining for like two, three days. So they might not be the most uh, hospitable at the moment. I do have a smoker just in case, but we're gonna try without. Because I like to experiment like that. Usually if you let them calm down, hopefully this doesn't pop too bad. Nope. That's what gets them. And you kind of slide your hive tool here. Yeah, that pop will alert them more than anything. Then you just go real slow. And then I do that anyway. So I don't like that. I really don't like the camera, but if I stand still, they might see it's not a threat and just kind of wander off. Now they're going for my queen marking pen for some reason. Hmm. Strange. Okay. So they're starting to fill this out, but not too much. Where I really want to get to is uh, the first box. So we're going to move kind of quickly here. I, mean, I can check this box out, but I don't think they've really been doing much of anything with it. I don't know if they're getting some stores built up. That's good. So that stores. You really don't want to have to feed your bees if you don't have to. So let's uh, let's check this one out real quick. You know what? Let's do this properly and be over here. That's what you should do. Because if you go at it from the back. You're at a really weird angle for picking up these frames and lots of weird crap happens. Let's go real slow. Okay, so I was worried about spotty brood, but I mean, it's kind of spotty. It's not the best, but it's a homegrown queen. I don't think we're gonna get a replacement this late in the year mid August 10th or 11th I think so they're trying to sting my face Means when you have glad you have your veil on because they just oh wow this entire frame is honey 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 wow okay so they're actually doing okay I think I think they're starting to ramp down a little bit because like I said it's August um, there has not been any rain here for a couple months up here in North Texas but we just got a big rainstorm came through probably why they're pissy um, yeah so good Suppose we can look, I mean, this one here, right? I put a 
put a donor frame in. I didn't see any bees hardly last week. Oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be really heavy. I can just tell. Oh, okay, they're still, still locked down over here. Oh my God, this is really heavy. Okay. This is bang full of honey. I don't know why I just banged, but it's really, really full. Okay, I might need my smoker now. We're getting, I'm starting to smell pheromones. I don't have a lot of smoker fuel left, which is my, my fault. Well, I don't want them really, really angry at me. And that's what's happening. So. They're already starting to calm down a little bit. Of course, it just rained, so there's nothing really here to smoke. You might be able to find some sort of dead leaves. Maybe we can kind of dry them off with our torch here. You can see they dissipated. They're gone. They're all back in that hive, which is really going pretty well, honestly. I mean, you can see all the bees in there. Once we get a good, good fire going in here, it should dry out everything and get a nice smoke. I mean, that's how you smoke stuff, right? You have mildly moist stuff and you'll light it. Not ideal, but hey, whatever it is. My way of beekeeping is just kind of whatever you have on hand, use that. Some people are, oh, you have to have pine chips shipped in from South America. And no, you don't. You just, you can literally grab this dead grass over here, shove it in your smoker, put some leaves on it and light it. It's a very light smoke. But it's working. Smoke the camera. And this is also why I like to have a metal hive top so I can do that. So let's find our hive tool that I always seem to put somewhere else. Let's find the frame that I donated. I believe it was this one. Yep, it was that one. Got, I've got X's, I've got lines, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Den denoting frames that I've donated to hives. I guess I can say over the years. It's been years. Over the years makes you sound old and wise. I may not be the most experienced beekeeper. Most beekeepers will never say they're an expert because bees are always teaching you something else. Always, always. The second you go, I know everything about bees, they turn it around on you and you know nothing. A truly wise man knows he knows nothing. So this was the donated frame, I think. Did I pull the wrong frame? Yeah, I think I did. Huh, strange. Well, you can kind of see 
the pattern I'm talking about. It's very sporadic. I mean, there's lots of bees here. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. They're bringing in pollen. There's pollen right there. Tell you what, we're gonna set this off to the side for a second. I know the queen's not on there. I wanna find the one I donated. I put a bunch of scratches on it, but I'm not seeing it now. It might actually be in the top one. I always try to mark these. I don't think I made a video because I was just out here doing my thing. Okay, see, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, no, wait. There's, there's brood in there. Open brood. Looks like four days old, maybe. I don't know if you can see. Just starting to... Maybe four or five days, just starting to become medium seas. Not tiny little seas, but medium seas. This is the old comb. There she is, there's a queen right there. I don't think I had my red pen, so I gave her a blue mark. Okay, well, she's small, but she's, uh, she's going. There's bees trying to Reuse propolis that I just unearthed, so they're on the they're on the lip here. You don't want to crush them. See how we're yeah, see now everything's down there. Kind of interesting trying to get all these working properly and. So we're probably just going to leave them alone. That's actually a good view. Because even when I'm here, you can still see. Okay. Smoker's going. See? Dried everything off. So when you put this back on here you want to smoke them because they'll go down and hopefully not get crushed gotta move kind of fast this is gonna suck because this is heavy but that's what you want because if it's heavy you know they're getting stores you know they're going to be ready for winter. Even if they don't provide honey for you this year, they will next year. So this is the one I wanted to look at. I also need to look at the flow hive real quick. See what's going on with it. And this is also when you look for Pests. Eh. I have a couple injuries on the field. See with hive beetles, you push until they crunch. And that's when you know they're gone. I've pushed under like little cockroaches. I've mashed them. And they just get up and walk off. You have to hear the crunch. Exoskeletons, a lot like bees. That's the wrong way. Okay, come on bee, you gotta leave. Don't wanna crush you. All right, that's it. Good, uh, looks like it's 
going along. I think she might have just been stuck up top. I didn't see the eggs because the comb is pretty dark. <sighs> That's the, one of the other problems with really old comb. You can get you can get pesticides built up in there. You can get um, other things, nasties. You know, just and then it's the cocoons. What happens is they draw the comb out. And then you'll get one cycle of brood, and it'll just get a little smaller. Another cycle, another cycle, another cycle, another cycle. And then eventually it gets so small, they just plug it up. And it, I mean, they can't use it for anything. So if you see comb like that, make sure you get it out. Um, you know, I think it's every five years, people have said. Um, so, yeah.